She sang about loving women and faithless men, about pain and sorrow. She sang about joy, too. She was a black American, and from the pain and the suffering of her people, she helped create the first truly American music. She was Bessie Smith. Bessie Smith was born in a shack in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The year was probably 1894. We can never be sure because in those days the local white governments didn't pay much attention to such details as the birth certificates for black babies. In those days, a black child had even less of a future in white America than now. There were really only two possibilities. Either you settle before a life of scrubbing floors and tending other people's children, or you could be an entertainer. If you had talent, that was a way out. Bessie got out. At the age of nine, on street corners in Chattanooga, with her brother Andrew playing guitar, she began to sing for nickels and dimes. And when she was 18, her oldest brother Clarence got her an audition with a black traveling show. And she was hired, mainly as a dancer. It was 1912. Silent movies were just beginning to catch on. But the most popular entertainment of the day was called vaudeville. Live shows with singers and dancers, comedians and acrobats, all sorts of acts that toured from one town to another, one theater to another. That was the kind of world Bessie became part of. <laughs> Ma Rainey was also part of that world. Gertrude Ma Rainey. <laughs> they called her the mother of the blues. She happened to be traveling with the show at the time Bessie was hired. She became a mother to Bessie and to her talent. And soon, <laughs> Bessie began to sing the blues on her own. Now, what exactly is the blues? Actually, the first blues song ever published was W.C. Handy's Memphis Blues. But the blues had been around in the songs and the chants the black slaves brought with them from Africa, in the work songs they sang in the cotton fields, in the hymns they sang in church after they became Christians, hymns that were called spirituals. As the great black composer Duke Ellington put it, these slaves studied the book of wisdom and set to music words of comfort and hope, which year after year were handed down to their colored brethren. Out of their lives, loves, joys, and despair, there came the kind of songs that summed it all up. W.C. Handy called it the blues. Right around 1914, Bessie was coming into her own. She was just a teenager, and she obviously didn't know she was the artist she was. She didn't know how to dress. She just sang in the street clothes. But she was such a natural. She only made $10 a week, but people would throw money on the stage, and the stage hands would pick up three or four dollars after every performance. When World War I ended in 1918, blacks came back from fighting for the U.S., looking for equality and justice. But whites were more interested in prohibition. The Congress had outlawed drinking and white America went crazy. They bought bootleg whiskey in cars, and radios, and phonographs. It was the phonographs and the radio that brought popular music into the home and made Bessie Smith famous. By 1922, Bessie was playing the big time. The blues were becoming a hit. Record companies began to make records with black artists for black audiences. They called them race records. At first, blues belonged to the South. It was not for the taste of better class people. But that was changing. Nineteen 
1923 it was the year Bessie turned her stormy romance with a night watchman named Jack G into a stormy marriage. It was also the year she made her first record. She went to New York City, stayed in Harlem, and recorded for Columbia Records. At that first session, Bessie sang downhearted blues and Gulf Coast blues. In six months, she went from a touring Southern vaudeville singer to a star whose first record sold 780,000 copies. She began to tour her own show. Everywhere she went, people had heard the records and wanted to see her in person. In the 1920s, black performers changed the sound and the beat of American entertainment. They began to spread this new style around the world. The jazz age had arrived. But the business of entertainment was run by white people. They spent most of the profits developing white performers who copied the jazz style. My mama done told me In her career, Bessie Smith earned only a small percentage of what she deserved. But she still did a lot better than most black performers. She sang My Man Blues, Money Blues, You've Lost Your Head Blues, Hard Driving Papa, and There'll Be a Hot Time in the Old Town Tonight. She also drank and swore. She had noisy romances with other men and women. And she was a fighter. If she thought she was being done wrong, she could brawl with the toughest of them. The blues wasn't just entertainment. It was life. Bessie's life and the life of her people. In 1929, the stock market crashed and America began its long tumble into depression. 1929 was also the year that sound began to make it big in films. It was also the year Bessie made her only movie. It was W.C. Handy's dramatization of his song, St. Louis Blues. After she made this movie, the blues descended on Bessie and her world. A marriage to Jack G finally ended with bruises and scars and another woman. The nation slipped deeper and deeper into depression. People didn't have the money to buy records. In 1931, after eight years, Bessie's contract with Columbia Records ended. Vaudeville was dying too, more the victim of talking pictures than the depression. Hard times. But Bessie adapted as best she could. When swing became the new popular style, Bessie proved she could swing with the best of them. It was happier music for a sad time in history. She married again and slowly things began to change. By 1937, the nation and Bessie were beginning to make a comeback. Business was picking up for the record industry. Bessie signed a new contract and was getting ready to record again. There was also the promise of another movie. Into her 40s, Bessie's body was bruised by 20 years of hard living. She had weathered the storms of her private life and her performing life, and now she was defying the odds again on her way back. Then came a tragic ending in Memphis with her new husband, Richard Morgan. Her show had done good business. It was scheduled to open in Darlin, Mississippi on Sunday afternoon. They left Memphis about 1 a.m. and headed south on Route 61. They had driven about 75 miles. Richard was tired. 
The road was dark and seemingly endless. There was a huge truck. Richard swerved to miss it, but it was too late. Bessie's death was sudden and shocking. Even now, there is disagreement over exactly what happened. Some say she was rushed by ambulance to a white hospital and denied emergency care. The story goes that she was then taken to a black hospital, but was dead on arrival. To this day, nobody knows what really happened. Bessie Smith was gone, but the blues lives on.